In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome to everybody who's joining us on live streaming today. In today's Gospel, Jesus is the Good Shepherd who summons his flock to follow him. And so to prepare ourselves for this Eucharist, remembers all ways in which we have failed to follow the Lord as he calls us. Lord of mercy, Christ of mercy, Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, lead us to share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said, Rulers of the people and elders, if we're being examined today concerning a good deed done to a cripple, by what means this man has been healed, be it known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, 
By him, this man is standing before you well. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, but which has become the cornerstone. And there is no salvation in, and there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in men. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. I will thank you for you have given answer and you are my savior. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Blessed in the name of the Lord is he who comes. We bless you from the house of the Lord. I will thank you, for you have given answer, and you are my Saviour. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The word of the Lord.
with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. At that time, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hireling and not a shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hireling and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. As the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will heed my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Not far from our, our London Priory, there is a, a barber, a hairdresser, which is called Identity. I have to confess I've never been there, but I assume the idea is that you, you go there and you choose your style, how you want to be seen, your identity. This is who I am. And this preoccupation with identity penetrates really every aspect of our life today. The traditional markers of identity, things like family, class, where you come from, gender, religion, they've all weakened. In what they call mammoth's kingdom, the only sure sign of identity is wealth and celebrity. So people are always posing the question, who am I? Who do I wish to be? What's my brand? What's the identity that I can forge? And some people become Catholic precisely because in the Catholic Church, they can find a secure, clear, strong identity a worldwide community spreading across time with strong, clear doctrines, Catholic social teaching, a clear ethic, practices, traditions. So when they're asked the question, who am I? They can answer, I'm a Catholic. And a lot of people talk about coming home at last. And other people leave the church for sort of mirror reasons. Because they experience this, this clear, strong identity as somehow oppressive. It's moral teaching as crushing. They feel the church is too exclusive, intolerant, and they say, get me out of here. I want to be free to discover who I am. But the beauty of today's readings from St. John, both his gospel and the first letter, is that they embrace both desires. The desire to know who you are and the desire not to know who you are. 
but to be on a voyage of discovery. Catholic identity, which people talk about a lot today, consists precisely in holding these two together. Because St. John said in that second reading, we know who we are, but we don't know yet. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we shall be has not yet been revealed. We know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, but we shall see him as he is. Yes, now we have an unshakable identity. We're God's children. He calls us by name. We recognize his voice. And this is an identity which is vastly more fundamental than being English or Scottish or Italian or Mongolian. It's far more profound than one's class or one's wealth. Dorothy Day's conversion was triggered by going to a church and seeing millionaires and the homeless going up to communion together. It's the same identity for saints and sinners, for the wicked and the holy. And even death cannot undo this identity, for we follow the risen one. So if you want a secure identity, known and sure, this is it. But who we are to be, we don't yet know. But we shall be like him when we see him as he is. So our full identity as Catholic Christians always lies ahead. It's always to be discovered. We're at the only at the beginning of understanding what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. We're summoned on an adventure of love that is beyond our imagination and we don't know where it will take us. And all this is rather scary. The sheep huddle in the sheepfold and they don't want to come out but the good shepherd summons them. He leads them out. Actually, in the Greek, it's even stronger. He throws them out. They belong to this vast flock that does not yet exist because the Lord has other sheep whom he knows and who know his voice. So any complacent sense of superiority to other Christians is utterly un-Catholic. Jesus says, I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead, that they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. So a truly Catholic identity is simultaneously reassuring and very alarming because our sense of who we are is always being stretched open, expanded. Mother Teresa of Calcutta said, we draw the family circle too small. So the people who want a secure, solid, known identity, we say yes. Here you find in the flock an identity that nothing can shake neither wealth nor poverty, neither sin nor failure or even death. But to those who want to escape an oppressive identity and to be free to discover who they are, the church offers an adventure, an identity which makes the American dream seem very tame indeed. Become divine. We shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is.
Let us stand and proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism, forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us bring all our hopes and desires to our Lord, confident that he hears us. That those who teach in the church will remain faithful to the gospel of repentance and forgiveness. Lord, hear us. that leaders of church, government, and industry will work together to provide food, employment, and justice. Lord, hear us. That we may understand why Christ had to suffer and on the third day rise from the dead. Lord, hear us. That those who are dying may know the peace of the risen Christ. Lord, hear us. that Christ, our advocate with the Father, will bring the dead to eternal glory. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Let us entrust these prayers and all the prayers hidden in our hearts to the intercession of Our Lady as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Heavenly Father, hear all these our prayers and grant them through Christ our Lord.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewed, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, and in this time above all, to lord you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifice of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity 
together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Dominic, our Father, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. As Jesus taught us, so we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word.
Look upon your flock, kind shepherd. Be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Thank you for joining us, all of you who are present with us on live stream. Keep us in your prayers as you are in ours. And thank you for all the support that you give us. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.